Recovering from knee surgery is highly variable. It was going to take forever to get better if I was ever going to get better. There's got to be something out there besides a CPM machine, which and clearly isn't helping me. Active and aggressive with this thing, or I was going to. Need you know, I'm a guy that's not vision. looking to relieve the pain. I'm a guy that's looking to get back in the game. That downtime was not what I wanted. We've spent the last seven years perfecting the recovery system that takes variability out of knee rehab so you can quickly get back to your life. Welcome to The Bee's Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. This is PJ Ewing. You are listening to The Bee's Knees. It's a podcast about knee surgery recovery and we interview different patients and surgeons and physical therapists and practitioners about you know, knee surgery before, during, and after the, the event. And in this case, we have a terrific guest named Dan D'Angeli, and Dan is gonna take us through his story, which I, I don't know where it's gonna head, Dan, but I think it's gonna be very encompassing of the things that one goes through, preparing for surgery, going through it, and then in your case, you had a hiccup in recovery and how you got through that. So. Um, I'm really, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, let's do that. Let's get the stuff kind of out of the way right at the beginning. Let's do the, and I'm not in any hurry, as I mentioned earlier before this call, before uh, we began, but tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, career stuff, you know, just give us a sense of who you are. Oh, okay. Uh, I grew up in Philadelphia. I lived in Boston for uh about 30 years. Um, professionally, I'm a contractor, very physical job, although I'm mostly in management. My, um, I was at one time a runner, avid runner, did a few marathons, not at a great pace, but there was a time when I was able to run, finish marathons. I am still um, an, an avid bicyclist, uh, you know, I'll come back to that later. T today, for example, on this cold day, I, I went out. I did 10 miles on the bike, which, you know, three months after knee surgery is it, is amazing for me to, to to be able to do that without pain, without any special effort. Um, so I guess my 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 hobbies and my profession have have sort of. Given my legs, um, they, I've, I've demanded a lot of my legs. I've demanded a lot of my knees. And uh, about two years ago, I, the, the cartilage in the left side pretty much just wore away to nothing. And uh, prior to my surgery, I was, I was bone on bone and had a very peculiar-looking walk. It was very, uh, you know, I had a lot of, the, the, the knee was bending way back in the wrong direction, and it was just done, used up. Was it painful when you would take a step? Was that just part of It was of never the painful. It was just very awkward to walk efficiently. And eventually I would just get tired out because it was so – I had a limp and uh, I couldn't do any hiking. I certainly couldn't do any running. Uh, biking was fine, uh, but everything else was kind of just at an end. And so uh, it was time. It was time. So you, your range of motion, it sounds like, was at least – 110, 115 degrees because you're riding the bike so actively. Um, oh, yeah. There was never any, any problem with the range of motion. The, the problem was when you've lost car cartilage, now your, uh, your, your leg is just, it's just really um, – imagine a vehicle that has no suspension. That gives you some idea of, of what it's like. Very gotcha. hard. Gotcha. Was this something that just, boom, this is – this is a problem, or was it kind of creeping up on you over? No, no, it it it, it, it was over several years, and uh, then I finally had an. Uh, I went in for an X-ray, and they said, "Yep, you know, you're a, you're a candidate for knee replacement." That was uh, with my the guy that ended up doing it, uh, Anthony Whipper, who uh, is at Orthopedic Associates, and they have an office out of um, the Faulkner Hospital right here uh, in Boston. Mm -hmm. I just saw him this morning, as a matter of fact. Oh, is that right? Wow, yeah, I'm gonna hear about that too. Yeah, um, sure. So, so it was just your left, though, not the just right. Just the left, yeah. And and who knows? Maybe someday the right will go as well. But uh, still got a lot of 
a lot of life left in the current in the in the original knee there so no hurry that's great it, it, how interesting is it dan that it did i mean the demands on your knees were i'm sure very even yet it was the left not for some reason, right? That became well. You know, yeah, compromised. I think that the, the right knee is dominant, and it's just that much stronger. So even though they're the, the two of them are getting the same use, uh, I think the left just being weaker is is the one that would tend to go first. That's just my theory. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We've never met in person, but you're a relatively slender guy, right? I don't think weight's ever been a problem for you, has it? Right. Weight is not a problem. And, in fact, I lost 20 pounds <laughs> over the course of my uh, convalescence. So now I'm, I'm uh, able to get into pants that uh, I, I had pretty much given up on. Uh, <laughs> well, that's great. I don't know why that's important, but it is important, actually. <laughs> well, you're dressing like you were in 1985. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I basically have the same waist. I've always had the same waist I had uh, as a as a younger person, and and now I'm, I don't know. I, I've I've had a lot of breaks. I've been a very lucky guy, and uh, this knee surgery and its convalescence has uh, made me very aware of uh, how much is right with uh, my body and how much of it uh, I do take for granted. So in some ways, that's the kind of um, I should call it the, the radical gratitude or the radical uh, appreciation gift that um, an otherwise healthy person gets uh, by going through this. Uh, it's made me, it's really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I've taken for granted. Interesting. I, it yeah. is, it's more transformative than I think a lot of people anticipate. It's, oh, right. my knee hurts, I go in for surgery recover back to myself, you know, a little, little hiccup along the way. But, you know, in my conversations with so many knee patients, I think you, I end up you know, hearing about depression, pulling back from their friends, you mm. know, uh, loneliness, just a, a lot of, it, there's a lot of emotion and a lot of impact on very cherished aspects of a person's life, you I, know, in some ways. I, you just, I don't really think uh, I experienced any Oh, I mean, I was difficult to live with. You can ask my wife or my kid. Uh, I, I had my moments of grouchiness. Um, but the thing is, this, this is the good kind of hospitalization. This is the good kind of surgery. You know, this is not in the category of something that just takes you down a very dark health path that you never, ever come back from. Uh, and it goes without saying that there are plenty of places in the world where people uh, just do not have access or places in this world where people have access but can't afford it for, for whatever reason. So um, I don't know. It's, I think it's transformed me in some way. I mean, like I said, my wife and my kid will still say I'm an old grouch, but uh, I, inside, inside, I feel like a better person for this. Mm, wow. Wow. Um, okay, so it was a few years. You realized you needed the surgery. How did you find your surgeon? And maybe can you talk about uh, talk about so I already had um, I'd already been to the Faulkner Hospital. This is a branch of the Brigham and Women's. I mean, again, I'm so blessed because here I am in Boston with some of the most amazing healthcare facilities uh, in the country. I mean, people come here to to get care. I'm already here, so that's nice. I can literally ride my bicycle. I did today, as a matter of fact, to his office right there in the Faulkner. So I already had some acquaintance with. Um, that hospital, and uh, so it, I just said, okay, so who, who here does knee surgery? And I just, they just put me right on to him. He has his own private practice within the Faulkner. So that, there, there, wasn't a, there was no shopping around. I, I liked him immediately. Um, he never pushed his agenda on me. He just simply said, well, you know, this is, this is typically what we do for people like you, and he just spelled it out for me without any uh, pressure. Uh, so that, that was how I found him. And it's Anthony Weber. That's the name? Anthony Weber, W-E-B-B-E-R. Got it. Um, yeah, we had, a, we, we had a good, we had a solid rapport from the get-go. You know, I own my own business. I am a contractor. I'm not covered by, uh, you know, weeks of paid leave like some employers. I had to... I had to decide, okay, this is going to, this is going to set me back. You know, uh, I'm going to be out of work and, and my income is going to take a hit, not to mention the cost of the thing. Uh, so I just finally had to figure out a time when it would be least 
uh, disruptive. So mm-hmm. figured, well, I don't want it in the summertime. That's going to cut into those activities. I don't want it in the middle of the winter because we're already slow then. So it just made sense to do it in September. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it went. And what kind of contracting is this? Is this uh, okay, so we, we do uh, kitchen and bath remodels. We do small uh, add-ons, uh, improvements to it basically it's a, we're, a, we're a homeowner service company. You know, people say, oh, we have a leak, we have something that's wet, we have something we are really tired of, we want to change it, we want to build a deck. Uh, you know, it's, it services the aging housing stock of Boston. And people, you know, people always want to make their houses nicer or more efficient or so that's kind of where we come in. And we do work that a lot of homeowners used to do themselves. Very few homeowners have the, uh, the, the, the workshop in the garage or the basement and can do things now. You'd be amazed. Hmm. Um, I literally have gone to people's homes and said, well, if you plug this in, it makes a big difference or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's put you in the hospital. You're having the surgery. Is, if there's anything to talk about there, I'd love to hear it. And then let's talk about you getting into your recovery of this left total knee replacement. Right. So, you know, you go into this thing, it's, it, it, it is a leap of faith. You have no idea uh, whether you're going to be the one, one of the success stories or whether you're going to be one of the, um, you know, um, my, uh, my wife's associate's husband had the same thing. He was an avid bicyclist, and now he's got all kinds of uh, sensitivity issues in his feet because of the knee surgery, or, or my brother who can't even feel his left foot at all. And so uh, you don't know the outcome. Um, and, of course, <laughs> if you go online and uh, look at videos about what actually happens in a knee replacement, it's, it can be a bit uh, off-putting. You know, there's a, there's a lot of cutting of muscle, removing of, uh, you know, cutting through bone, drilling. In my case, uh, the surgery went great, but then uh, – about uh, two weeks after that, I developed uh, internal scarring, uh, completely unpredicted, and I could not do the physical therapy that was uh, set up. I had to go back in for what is called a, an MUA, which means uh, manipulation under anesthesia, where they basically uh, put you under and they break, they physically break the scarring tissue uh, that has formed. And, again, it's a leap of faith. You have no idea if you're going to be one of the people who um, heals too quickly for their own good. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's a good thing to heal quickly, but in my case, it, 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 was, it was detrimental because it, the scarring just happened so quickly that I didn't have time to get my range of motion back, which is kind of the, uh, the main event of physical therapy is, is getting that range of motion back. So when did you have the manipulation? Was it how many weeks after the, the original? I think it was – uh, I have to look at my calendar, but it was it was two or three weeks after um, the the surgery, I believe, because we just weren't making any we weren't making any headway at that point. I was still getting uh, physical therapy at my at Milton Hospital. They have a very nice facility there, but they they really were not making any progress uh, with me, and um, so they said, "Okay, we're going to have to. You've got scarring. We're going to have to get you back in there and snap it." <laughs> that's, you know, Dan, that's, so, and, that's and really during fast. that time, yeah. you know, I started looking around the internet, and that's when I first saw the, because um, I had heard such horror stories about physical therapy, and then I was not really, uh, you know, it's 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 really it's no fun. It's really it's there's a private torture. Or, you know, people have other other names for PT other than physical therapy, like private torture. You know, it's, it is a very hard process. Yeah. And, you know, in my case, I went to Milton Hospital. Uh, they have a very nice facility there, but I, I didn't – I wasn't making progress. And so um, the, 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 the guy who set me up – I'm not going to name him over the, over the your uh, podcast here, but the head therapist there said, okay, so the, the important thing here is that after you get your manipulation, we need to get you in here as soon as possible so that the scarring doesn't re, reform. And uh, it was in the week leading up to that that I had already been talking to you, 
and doing some um, Facebook views of the, of the X10, and I was thinking, okay, the X10 looks pretty cool. I'm not thrilled with physical therapy so far, and I kind of made a, a promise to myself. I said, okay, if, if this – because one thing, that, one thing the physical therapist said to me uh, was, okay, before you come in for your first therapy after the MUA, um, make sure you've taken plenty of Oxycontin. And I, to me, that was a big red flag right there because, uh, you know, Oxycontin is a very strong narcotic. It's very habit-forming. Uh, I had already gotten off of it because it constipated me. And, of course, that's a, that's a very common side effect. It, it right. Basic, it, 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 it's like it freezes your, your, your digestion system. It's a terrible side effect. So I was in no place to get on it again, but I, I said, well, all right. So I, I took a few oxys, went in there, and he, he just came at me like a linebacker, and it was a horrible experience. And I had already said to myself, okay, I'm going to give him a try, but I'm also going to talk to um, Todd, who's your assistant, uh, to see if, if there is a machine available if, you know, sort of as plan B, if the physical therapy turns out to be, uh, you know, more than I want to take. Okay. You know, I would have been much happier if he had said something along the lines of, well, this is going to be tough, but we're in this together. Or if he said, let's not expect too much today, first day out, but we need to at least try to get some motion. He, if he just had a, a different manner, I, I might have been willing to go back, but it was, it was so confrontational. And um, he's a guy, I'm a guy, and so, you know, there's kind of like this unspoken code, like, you know, if you don't show weakness, then I won't recognize it. And to me, it just it, it touches upon a, a, a very basic problem with the way physical therapy is done, at least there, is, is, is that it's, it's, it's very medieval in, in a way. You know, you, you, you're, you can be fooled by you know, these beautiful shiny surfaces and this, this brand new facility, but um, it still, uh, it still kind of leaves the patient um, at a loss. And I remember a couple times he said, Dan, you're going to have to keep your voice down because there's a, a person here with a heart condition, <laughs> which was a joke. We both knew that it was a joke, but it was just his kind of smart alecky way to say, not only do we express, expect you to endure pain, we don't even want you to make any sounds as you're enduring it. And so, it, again, it was just kind of like this macho Marine Corps type, you know, who's going to be tougher here, me or you? And I just thought, this, is, this has nothing to do with healing. This has nothing to do with recognizing the actual experience of what, of, of just how painful this thing is. So I guess you could say at that point I said, okay, uh, I'm going to get PJ on the phone here because uh, even though his machine is not covered by insurance, uh, I'm not hearing any, any of his customers wailing about how horrible it is. In fact, if anything, um, they're doing the opposite. They're saying, you know, I was able to get my range of motion back, and you have to commit to it, but – it, it's not torture, you know. It, it, you, okay, so we're sort of crossing into another area here, but um, no, it's very, very interesting to hear what you say because it's, it's about control. I mean, the thing yeah. is, it, you know, your whatever your ailment is, your progress um, is dramatically affected by how much control you feel you have over the process. I mean, if you have a physical therapist who just says, okay, lie back, I'm coming at you, ready or not, I mean, that's very, um, you know, it's, it's like you don't exist anymore. He's just there to get results. And uh, there's a strong mind-body connection in any kind of healing. So to the extent that you feel you know, your attitude and involvement is, is recognized and included and honored, um, you're going to be that much, that much further along in your healing process. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, uh, so, so now let's look at the X10. Uh, I mean, right, leave alone the technology of the X10. The fact that you're in the driver's seat, it's huge. I cannot overemphasize how uh, how big that is, where you can say, okay, 
I'm ready to get on the X10 now, not later, or maybe a different day you're going to say, you know what, I need to go out and do something. I'll, I'll, I'll get on the X10 at 10 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock or whenever I'm used to doing it. And then the length of time you're on it, you get to decide. And then, of course, how much you give yourself, how much force, how much range of motion. Uh, every single point along the way, you get to decide um, what is best for me right now. You don't have to negotiate with some other person who seems to know better. You get to decide. You do have to endure some discomfort with the X10, but, but when, it, when, it is, when you get to decide how much discomfort and how long that discomfort lasts uh, and, and very incrementally increase it according to how strong or motivated you feel that day, uh, it, it has a huge impact. And then, of course, it's a very precise machine, so you can see just how much did I get to that? Did I, did I get three degrees? Oh, today I went for five. Great. Now, later on, you might feel some pain. Maybe that was a little too much. Okay, so you back off a little bit. Uh, so I just think the control aspect of it, it makes, a, makes a huge difference how, in, in how, uh, how you much? press. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you're in charge. It's in your home. Um, you're making some decisions. Uh, tell me where and how and if the coach played a role in some of that decision making. You know, you worked with Todd directly. Oh right, uh, yeah. And did that? Were there? Was it hard to figure out? Did you lean on him a lot, a little? How did that work? No, no. You know, he he just. He was available, but I didn't feel I needed him because the machine is pretty easy to operate. Um, I basically just checked in with him, uh, you know, every few days and say, this is where I'm at. You know, do you think five degrees is too much for one day? Should I spread it out? Uh, you know, the machine has other options uh, to, to, like it has a, a leg strengthening option, which he encouraged me to use. Um, I, I don't know. It didn't seem that complicated. It didn't mm -hmm. seem like I really, well, you know, once he explained, he, he, he spent about an hour with me when the machine first came, and after that, he just said, I'm, I'm available, so I'm a phone call away. You know, I only had the machine for two weeks, and, and by the last two days, I was, I was maxed out at 1.30. So it just, in my case, it, it, it didn't affect the overall progress. I'm glad you brought that up um, because I was looking in, in my notes as you were speaking just now, and I think, well, at least the, the note that we received from you was that you were somewhere around 90 degrees when you started, do you remember what the numbers were on the X? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I started at 90 and, and ended yeah. up at 130. So that's kind of ridiculous, by the way. 40 degrees in two weeks. I mean, I, I, I well, was, I, you know, wow. I, I, I was very motivated, and plus, you know, I have a high pain threshold. I'm, I am very active, so I came into the process in reasonably good shape. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, I played some tricks with myself, which I can share with you. Sure. Um, I don't know if this is of interest to your readers, but um, you know, like I said, back at back at Milton Hospital, I wasn't allowed to make wasn't allowed to make any sounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I got my revenge when I got the the X10 by basically blasting hard rock. Um, I love it. I don't know, you know, Mick Jagger. You, there's something about give me shelter. It just it just made me sort of push through that that tight squeeze at the top of the the, the top of the arc um, again I really this, love this that back to that. the comfort of having the thing in your own home it's your own home y you you're going to figure out a way that works for you you want to you want to do it naked great you want to do it the Mick Jagger great you want to drink a, a, a huge vat of espresso and get you in the right mood go for it that that's that's all part of making it your own like ownership. That was the word I was looking for. You you kind of own the thing for two weeks and you 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 make it work for you in the way that works best. In my case, it was playing Mahler or Prokofiev or or the Rolling Stones, whatever it took. Um, 
I love that, Dan. I really love oh, yeah. that. So that, was, that was how I was able to, yes, go from 90 to 130 in such a short time. Wow. We had a patient um, in Maryland oh, really long, four years ago, and named Merlin, and it was Rigoletto. She, she blasted I mean, These opera. are powerful emotions, you know? Yeah. Rigoletto, why not? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I played uh, uh, Shostakovich. That was it. Shostakovich number five. This was uh, written during the um, the blockade of uh, of Leningrad by the the German army. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine the suffering of this guy? Uh, so it kind of motivates. Like, what do I got? This puny little knee problem. Jeez, imagine having no food and being bombed by the Germans. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just me. But it oh, that's amazing. No, it's amazing. And, and it, you know, I think you're touching upon the fact that uh, there's a physical thing that has to happen. You've got to bend your knee. You've got to maintain or regain strength. Huh. Uh, you know, got it, got it. But, you know, if you don't do it right, if someone's uh, coming at you like a linebacker, as you described it, you're going to do what they call guard. You're going to do protective muscle guard. Oh, that's right. Back. That's the other thing. Is that because, I'm glad you brought that up. If you, if you know, okay, I'm going to the top here. I'm stretching to one, 129 today, and I'm going to hold it at the top, and I'm going to hold it for 10 seconds. That's going to, that's going to pinch. That is not going to be, feel good. But Mind over matter. You know the end is near. You can see it. You can count down. You say, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, man. Three seconds, done. And you get to decide that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you, you can endure tremendous discomfort when you know how long it's going to last, and it, you can end it at any time if you need to. You know, Dan, um, as much value as this talk that we're having is for a person who's, you know, going to have surgery in three months or three weeks and is just trying to get lots of answers, this talk is going to help people that are actually on this particular machine, the X10, uh, because they're looking for insights and advice and techniques and tactics. And what you've offered um, already is just, you know, make it your own. Uh, it's your make tool. it your own. I remember there was this other guy, he's a little older than me, who, who had a very nice uh, video. He said, well, you know, you could, you could set it up in your living room and watch a movie while you're doing this, but what he found was that the, the controls and the, the display um, were kind of engaging to him. You know, he was really into looking at that screen and, and seeing what the angle was and what the pressure was and, and what the length of time. And, and yeah, like you say, I, well, he wasn't the guy that said playing it like, what did you say, playing it like a... Um, a piano. Like a piano, like, but, but yeah, that's basically what you do. You, you're, you're kind of tweaking, constantly tweaking. And um, it's kind of entertaining in a way, I guess. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know, it, it, it reminded me of the first time I learned how to drive, where it's just like, wow, I'm in control now. I get to decide. I have my foot on the pedal. My hands are on the steering wheel. Not moms, not dads. It's me now. Mm-hmm. And this is tremendously empowering to someone who's been, you know, worked over by uh, not just the therapist, but by the surgeons, the anesthesiologists. There is so much in this process where you really have no understanding or control over what's happening. You just kind of have to say, okay, you guys are the professionals. I guess I'm in your hands now. Hope it doesn't hurt too much, or I hope I don't get hooked on narcotics or this or that or the other thing. Hope I can afford the bills when they start coming in. I mean, that's kind of a that's kind of stressful when you have to kind of just leave yourself open. So at least with the X10, that is one piece of the knee recovery journey that you finally have some say in, some control. I, again, I, I cannot overemphasize how that contributes to your recovery. Uh, we had a patient um, recently who flew from Perth, Australia to Maryland to use the X10 because we're still small and we don't have, you know, we're not everywhere by any stretch. And she described, I'd call her, checking in, how are you doing? 
and, and she's and she's in a foreign country, leaves her family, husband, two weeks to get this this knee wow. right. Wow. And I know, wow. amazing commitment. Yeah, I had friends in Maryland. And, and what, what struck me, though, based upon what you just were talking about, was that she wasn't watching TV. She was in her friend's house. There's a cat wandering around who she said didn't like her very much. And it was just Shirley and her screen and her knee three times a day. I mean, she, she did block out. There was no Shostakovich. And it was the screen, the knee, you know, head, head in the game kind of thing. Whereas others, I think, will massage along the way or they'll play Rigoletto or the Rolling Stones or, you know, there are various ways of using it. But again, you, you make it your own. And when you've got the advisor to help you when you need it, your coach Todd or other coaches that we have, yeah. you know, radioing in um, to, to help, you know, it becomes hopefully a, a, obviously a peaceful but very productive time when you're right. You've just been through a whole bunch, even, I mean, even the canceled surgeries or the anxiety or the picking of the surgeon. I mean, this is a long process to finally get to the place where you're trying to recover. And you certainly don't want anxiety in the middle right. of that process because that, that compromises a recovery. I mean, if you've got, anxiety of course it reco- got- it's the mind body connection. It's, it, yeah. it cannot be overemphasized. Totally, totally true. Yeah. Um, you, and you the mentioned- other thing is if you talk to people who have been through uh, knee replacement surgery uh, without the benefit of this machine, they all say to a person that physical therapy was by far the worst part of this process. Mm-hmm. It's torture. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it gives yeah. a lot of people hesitation about doing it at all. I, I have to say, you know, not to keep agreeing with you on everything, cheering you along, but I will say that a lot of people that did use our device eventually, you know, they got on it right after surgery or or it solved the problem, like in your case, after the manipulation, um, it was the green light to then go ahead and have the other knee done because the anxiety over recovery was just so great that oh, once they got yeah. through it and they found that it wasn't so bad and they could do it and the X10 helped, they were, they were within months doing the other one because right. a lot of people don't want to do two at once. They want to do one after the other. You know? Well, I think so. the challenge for you guys is to figure out some way to get insurance to cover this thing because, yeah. look, I'm, I'm just an ordinary working Joe. Uh, I don't have the, you know, that was a tough decision. It was never a decision about which I wanted to do. It was a decision of, okay, the PTs basically covered most of it. The X10 is not. Huh. Am I, and again, the whole macho thing, like am I tough enough to just save the money and go through the manipulation? And I decided, you know what, I go through the regular therapy, and I decided I actually am tough enough, but the problem here is I'm, I haven't been respected. That was the decision, not whether I could endure the pain, but just the, um, the, the casual cruelty of the thing, if you will. And I, I later had a conversation with this person at that hospital who was in charge of – her title is literally patient experience supervisor. And I say, you know something, you've got people that are technically trained, but they, they, need a, they need a different kind of training that isn't about understanding musculature. It's about understanding what's going on in the mind of people they're telling to be quiet, please, as you endure your pain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what the yeah. hell? Yeah, yeah. Come on, we're better than that. We're better than that. This is the 21st century here. You know, Dan, we didn't know that when this machine first came onto the into the world, you know, seven years ago or longer, seven, seven and a half, um, it, we didn't anticipate some of the things that you're experiencing. Uh, it was a, a better mouse trap, uh, bending. It was uh, right after surgery. You know, we didn't anticipate solving problems like years. We didn't anticipate strengthening. We didn't anticipate uh, gentleness and the effect that this would have on the overall feeling of recovery. It was, it was a, a tool. Um, and with, without, you know, a lot of, we didn't have a lot of understanding of really where it's come in a relatively short period of time. And uh, it's really interesting to hear how it affected your, I don't know, your whole approach to this recovery. But again, back to where we were, you, you had to make a decision. Do I write the check you know, and, and, or do I not? And um, what, what well, it helped it? that you it helped that you were um, willing to pass me over to um, Care Credit, right? 
Yeah, and that's so great. I never, I didn't see it as a, as a, as one singular check. I saw it as um, payments over right. time. I mean, that's it's just like any other thing, like uh, payments on your car, your house. You don't you don't write this mammoth check that's going to put you in the poorhouse. You just figure, okay, it's just going to be part of my monthly budget for the next year. Can I yeah. handle it? Yes or no. And in my case, I decided, yeah, I can probably handle it. You know. And it's, I think um, I'm it's worth without it. interest. That's the best part about it, right? It's it. There's no interest. Our company has paid the the whatever interest charge would have normally been. So it's it's the same as you pay over 12 months in this case, but it's not. Um, you're not paying more. You're not. It's not adding up in the background. Right. I, right. I like that so, I don't know. That 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 to me was the thing that, in my case, I guess it comes out to maybe 200 a month or something like that. But mm -hmm. a little less. Like I know I'm not a financial person. I, I you know I'm, I don't I don't know the the tricks and ways of, of making my money grow faster and, and I don't know. I just thought, well, uh, I can cut back on this or that. I'm going to make it happen. Well, you I, did, I, and I, you you ended up. I was kind of also fascinated by the X10. I just thought, I just say, hey, I want to be part of the club, man. I I don't want to be one of the. <laughs> Of the sufferers, I want to. I want to be part of that. Those people over there who are just in in the comfort of their home and saying, "Yes, I hit 120 today." Woo right. <laughs> I well, want you, to be part of that crowd. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's funny. We could have ended this call at the very beginning. You rode your bike to the surgeon's office. You went 10 miles today. Oh, I mean, oh yeah. Come on. Well, it's three months I later, you're there. doing so well. The funny thing is, he, you know, he's been seeing me through this whole process. Now, there was a time when, um, you know, I rode my, I have a, another bike that's electric, uh, electric assist. And uh, I was riding the electric assist about uh, four weeks after surgery. Of course, I wasn't using my left leg, but I was just so anxious to get off my um my sick bed and get out and get some exercise. So I basically tied the pedal, the right pedal, and did all the motion with the right leg plus the electric assist. And this guy said to me, "You're the I've done literally hundreds of knee surgeries, and you are the only person I've ever met who was riding a bicycle within a month of surgery. You're wow. in a, you're like in this one percent category. So today." Uh, to, to just check in with him, I said, okay, I'm riding over there. It's a 10-mile ride. I don't care. And he was blown away. It's like, wow. <laughs> thank you. No, oh, thank sorry. you. No, no, thank you. You know, this kind of <laughs> bro fest going on. Um, wow. But if, I, I will say that to your listeners. If you, if you can ride a bicycle, uh, you know, there are certain tricks uh, I mean, it, it is it is by far, I think, the best exercise to get the get the motion and strength back. <laughs> of course, it's cold now, January. But um, one thing I did learn was, if you raise the seat, uh, you, you know, the, the 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 flex doesn't have to be quite as bad as it. So you want to get that seat up, so you're not pinching the knee at the top of the the top of the turn, the top of the stroke. Mm -hmm. um, and and even then, it's going to hurt when you get out there at first. But um, I don't know. It just it just seems like the benefits will eventually outweigh that initial discomfort if you can do it. I've talked a lot about the stationary bike on these calls with various people. You're not alone. There was a gentleman named Richard who was one of our earlier interviews on this young podcast. And he was all about the bike, the bike as well. And he's now in Florida. Uh, he, his surgery was a little bit before yours, but very similar results. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bike was really another, you know, for many free, uh, but very instrumental tool to the recovery. You know, it's a companion to this X10 machine and for a lot of people. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this has been really, really, really great. Is there anything yeah. that we didn't cover that you – because you had some lots of things in mind when we before we started the call. Do we cover all the ground that we wanted to? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm obviously a huge fan. Um, and again, people are going to look at this and say, "You want how much to rent this thing for two hours?" Or, but I don't know. You know, I'm I'm just a guy with an ordinary income. I was able to make it work, and um, 
I don't know. I just feel it's worth it, given your. In other words, you 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 go through this process as 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 something that makes you stronger and better uh, physically, rather than going through the process as this horrible period of your life that you just look back on with dread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you no, know? mm-hmm. and again, we, this is the United States. I mean, for all of our. For all of the flaws and, and darkness that we live in now, given this and that, I won't go into detail. I think you know what I mean. But, sure. you know, we are still, uh, you know, a major industrial power here. We, we should be able to have this process. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be torture. shouldn't be medieval. You know, it's funny. And, and, you know, just a testament to the creators of this thing, it, it's conceived, created, uh, designed, manufactured in Michigan, and it's growing. It's going to employ so many people. It's shortening recovery times. It's making recovery civil. Uh, it will be, you, you are, you know, you'll look back, Dan, I'll look back on this call in a year or two and we're like, wow, we were, we were pretty small, but way back when Dan was on the machine, and look how much bigger we are. Look how many states we're in. Well, Maybe we're in a I feel country. I feel the machine should be should be in, in hospitals. I, I mean, I, I think you're going to look back on this and say, remember when Todd was driving all around New England, scurrying this way and that way, and it was just Todd trying to move the limited number of machines to meet the ever growing demand. I, you know, it's going to be like the early years of the of the Model T. It's like remember when there were cars but no gas stations. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. It, I really think it's it's the way forward rather than having these these physical therapists wrestling with people and telling them not to make so much noise. Mm, yeah, I, I hope that's soon to be a thing of the past. I'm a, an applause to you for that. I agree, and and yeah. I, so we'll go talk. out there, PJ, and start making some more machines. Get going. Yeah, well, we're doing that now. and it, this is a Public waits one. for you. <laughs> right, right. Well, Dan, thank you uh, so much for your, your words and your participation in this. You know, more than anything beyond, you know, extolling the virtues of this particular tool is you're giving people a lot of insight. And I know that those who will listen to this, you know, this month, the next month, the next year are going to, uh, really get a lot out of the conversation. So thank okay. you so well, much. Okay, well, it has been my pleasure, and I wish you every success. I'm Dr. Justin Trosclair, host of two-time Podcast Awards nominated A Doctor's Perspective podcast. I interview doctors in and out of my profession about their specialties and the occasional non-doctor special guests. But we also go behind the curtain and see what's working for their marketing, overcoming struggles, practical knowledge, book choices, and relationship advice. Join me on any podcast app on your phone or visit a doctorsperspective.net for the show notes pages and free resources. I want you to have an abundant home life as well as a thriving practice. So come on, take a listen. To learn more, visit x10therapy.com, 1-855-910-5633. Just a reminder, it's a huge help if you subscribe to, rate, and review our podcast. It helps people find us. X10, back to full strength.